The first session in the afternoon is ACCI initiatives and promotion targeting the region. We have three speakers. First speaker is Ms. Shimoda Irachi, a director of environmental management group of Global Environment Department of China, followed by the presentation by Ms. Takeuchi Nao, Human Settlement Officer of Waste Management of and Basic Service Section, United Nations Human Settlement Programs and Habitat. And lastly, we have Mr. Silva Magaya, Councillor of Maputo City of Mozambique. After the three presentations, we will have a Q&A for all the presentations. If you have questions, please utilize the chat box of Zoom application. And please also identify your affiliation and your name as well. Those who are at this venue, please write down your questions on the question sheet and raise your hand. We will collect your questions. When you do not have the question sheet, please contact our secretariat as well. Now I'd like to invite Ms. Shimodaira from Chaika to proceed with this session. Thank you. I'm Shimodaila from Environmental Management Group at JICA. Hope I can, my voice is coming through. It's, this session, this has been introduced. It is the JCCI initiatives targeting the region go beyond the national borders. So we'll be looking at the inter-region and intra-regional transnational collaborations. The people who are participating from Africa, uh, Mr. Takeuchi and Mr. Magaya, good morning. To begin with, I'd like to start with the overview of JICA's regional cooperation. Uh, Mr. Takeuchi, ACCP uh, in Africa, we are working together for African Clean Cities Platform. And one of those models under this platform is the waste management improvement. And at the end of the session, we'll be taking questions and we would like to also have exchange of views. So this is the overall procedure of this session. In this session, as I mentioned earlier, in addition to ACCP, we'll be looking at J Prism as well. Please go to the next page. Go to the next, please. As economic development and urbanization progress in developing countries, there are various environmental problems are becoming more prominent. Increased waste, for example, water pollution, air pollution, soil contamination, and GHG emission increase. All of these environmental risks pose long-term damage within and across national borders. There will be an impact on the overall region and more importantly, the impact will spread even across generations. In recent years, you may have heard marine plastics, global warming, and ecosystem impact have become global issues of growing concern. These issues are cross-regional issues. and they share common solutions. So within the region, it is important to have regional cooperation to maximize the possible impact. To go to the next slide, please. JICA has traditionally sought to expand its cooperation, bilateral cooperation, basically. On the other hand, there is so much we can do individually. So we are working with agencies private sectors, we've had cooperation from these stakeholders to expand the impact. In recent years, not just the experiences and technologies of develop, developed countries like Japan, but the ongoing effects and living lessons, know-how of developing countries themselves, both present practical, useful know-how. With that in mind, JICA has been leading and participating in various platforms with an emphasis on regional and broad-based initiatives on a global level. 
we are participating in projects organized by other organizations. And top two are the project led by JICA. However, in those projects, we are also emphasizing regional cooperation. A good example of such broad-based initiatives is African Clean Cities Platform, ACCP. When we had TCAT 6 in, in 2016, the management, uh, waste management important has been recognized. And we decided to take joint action on this. So officially in 2017, this was established in Maputo City, Mozambique, from which we will have a speaker today. And the Ministry of the Environment, JICA, UN Habitat, UNEP, and also the host city of TICAT, Yokohama City, are operating this platform. As I mentioned earlier, the Ministry of Environment and JICA are the leaders in these projects, but there are solutions which can be implemented by African countries themselves. They can contribute to the achievement of SDGs. These three points that are described here are minor detail points. When we have a conference, the G7 countries, we have study tours. In number two, this is about each country's effort and knowledge of Japan to be accumulated so that it can be effectively transported. And this requires coordination that is indicated in number three. If you look at the map, almost all African countries have participated. In 2017, we only had 24 countries, 27 cities. However, these numbers actually grew to 43 countries and 160 cities as of January this year. On the other hand, if you look at JICA's efforts, alone, it is great to have increasing number of participating countries. However, it's almost impossible to carry a project individually in each country. This means it is increasing, increasingly critical to work on a broader based initiative to spread the result of the recipient countries to the whole region. In other words, we will create a model in one country and spread that to other countries. So this is how we collaborate with ACCP. So we conduct projects. Other than these, we have conducted Pan-African surveys on several occasions. Most recent one took place in 2021 and 2022. This was a study on municipal solid waste management in seven African countries. We're looking at legal system, waste collection, transportation, and final disposal site, as well as intermediate treatment and recycling. And we actually applied three levels of waste management to these surveys. Moving on to the next slide, there are three levels. And these are, first of all, improvement of public health, cleaning out the streets. So improvement of public health, that is number one. Once this is done, we would move on to reduction of environmental impact and pollution prevention, and then go to three R's, establishment of a sound circular society. These are all related to social economic conditions of each country and the ability of the government depending on the degree of economical development and the size of population are also relevant factors. If you could go back to one slide. With that in mind, we'll look at the economical development level, population size, and try to understand where each country is positioned, what are the challenges that they have, and it's been mapped in this diagram to try to find out what are some of the common challenges. By knowing some common problems to a group of countries, we'll be able to implement effective projects. 
to a group of countries which have similar challenges. Can you go back one, page 12? The, in, the countries, but the first level, as I mentioned earlier, will provide basic administrative service, legal system, organizational formulation. And on the other hand, if you look at countries in the second level, challenges that they have are different. So with that in mind, I showed you the mapping earlier, South Africa. It is uh, advanced countries, one of the advanced countries. And from high level country to low level countries, it is possible to import some of their knowledge and experience. And to make it possible, we can utilize ACCP as a tool to make that happen. Between these countries, we need to fortify the ties and relations. And we are conducting training in Japan. In addition to that, we organize study tours and online webinars so that people will understand what is taking place in Africa. Now I want to talk about the day person, Japanese Technical Cooperation Project for promotion regional proportion of regional initiatives on solid waste management in Pacific Island countries. Pacific Island countries have many constraints. They are small geographical islands. They are isolated. And they're remote from foreign market, their internal market is limited, and they're vulnerable to climate change. So there are many constraints that they face. Also, people in those islands, they'll be affected by global value chain. Their lifestyles have been changed in recent years. They suffer from hurricanes and earthquakes every year. And the capacity of administrative service is limited to cope with these challenges, impact has been witnessed in the tourism industry as well. Just like African countries, there are a common set of problems in those countries. So we would like to look at those common issues to maximize the possible impact of projects. Comprehensive support has been provided by JICA for many years. In 2000, we had the second Pacific Island Summit. In the beginning, we were trying to provide technical support to each country individually, but we are now shifting toward the regional cooperation with a partner of Pacific Regional Environmental Program in Samoa. We have organized project in Samoa and there are more educated other countries are asking for support and we decided to sort of combine all of those requirements so that we can provide comprehensive service under J Prism. We started with 11 countries in the second phase and third phase. Currently we are providing cooperation services to nine countries. There are three phases. We have completed the first Two, and we are beginning phase three. Remember those three steps? Basic waste management system is going to be established. Environmental plan needs to be formulated and we have to increase the capability to cope. And the focus has been placed on human resource development for them to be able to connect with each other within the region. And also, since they are remote and isolated, we are and return is something that we are focusing on so that we can have circular economy inside the region. Let's go to the next slide. This has just started. Uh, we are going to start it in April. This is J Prison Phase 3. Over 10 years, there have been many efforts made 
but there are different degrees of development and the need of improvement. So we had to lay the baseline. On top of that, we want to build the circular economy and society that is our target. Please go to the next slide. Intra and inter-regional cooperation need to be looked at so that we can increase the effectiveness. We have developed tools to collect data. And also, as you can see in the center, we have a common set of tools that are available to partner nations. We also have a checklist. This is a simplified tool to understand where we stand and what are the lessons we can learn from other countries. So this is sort of a guidance or guide for them to be able to use. And if you look at inter-regional cooperation, we have seen an increased cooperation from Sudan to Bangladesh. There has been technical cooperation. The third country training has been conducted. There are leading countries beyond different countries and culture, but we are trying to look at similarities so that there will be effective learning to understand what exactly each country should do. To the right, we have Dominican Republic to Peru. Dominican Republic has worked on landfill management based on Fukuoka methods. This practice has been taught to Peru. So this is a system to facilitate that learning. And at the very bottom, this is the Fukuoka method landfill in Ethiopia. This is the final disposal site. The sanitation management is a common set of challenge. And there were 14 different countries learning this case study. JICA has been facilitating such cooperation within JPRISM or utilizing JCCP. We have conducted the project in partnership with many. In order to expand this scope, we would like to make sure there will be clear benefit to participants. We had African project on top, you would see developing countries are actually leading many of these activities and development partners, they have global SDG target achievement, and private companies to the right, they have made investment and they are also trying to extract innovative ideas from local startup as well. Through all of these activities, we are trying to co-create knowledge and experience. So again, this will be based on collaboration with our partners to enhance intra and interregional cooperation. I had to go through this presentation quickly. ACCP activities, uh, this will be explained by Ms. Takeuchi of UN Habitat, and there will be also further explanation by Makoto Sugi Councillor. So please. Hello. Thank you very much for your introduction, uh, Ms. Murara. My name is Nao Takeuchi. I'm, uh, my name is, uh, I'm a waste management specialist uh, for your, from you and Habitat. And thank you very much. And I'm happy to be here in the seminar today. So yes, thank you very much for sharing the screen. So now uh, today I would like to make a presentation about the uh, progress and achievement for the uh, African Clean Cities Platform activities from 2020 to 2022. Uh, so, uh, this is the duration that UN Habitat uh, hosted the Secretariat of the, the ACCP. So I would like to go through some of the uh, key highlights of uh, our achievements and in progress uh, to, uh, for, towards the uh, uh, SDG 1161 and in other waste related SDGs achievements. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, 
Thank you very much. <clears throat> Before going into the contents, uh, I'm sorry, if you could go back to the one slide back. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> so um, before going into the content, I would like to make a little bit of a um, uh, short visit to the global um, challenge of the municipal solid waste management. So the, uh, currently we have a 2 billion people without access to waste collection service. 3 billion people is without access to controlled waste disposal. And if we go a bit go, go as business as usual, 8 to 10 percent of global GHG emission is considered to be coming from the waste sector. So I would say this is a still very massive uh, challenge that is uh, um, attracting uh, very little attention at the moment. Next slide, please. And when you look at, <coughs> sorry. When you look at the more regional um, uh, situation, especially in Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africa is the fastest growing region with the waste expects to nearly triple by 2050. This is coming from the uh, Water Waste um, a report uh, from World Bank in 2018. Next slide, please. And then of course that the, you can, as, as you might see, uh, as you, are aware the uh, waste collection coverage, especially in Africa, is uh, sometimes uh, less than half half of the uh, waste. So uh, less than, especially in urban areas, less than half of the waste generators in Africa collected formally. Waste collection is often non-existent in rural areas. Next slide, please. And in the seventy percent of waste is openly dumped or often burned. And then I think this is a little bit like a lower estimate, uh, seeing those uh, practices on the ground. However, this is the uh, statistics coming from the water waste 2.0 from World Bank. Next slide, please. So in order to address those uh, massive challenge on solid waste management, uh, coming along with the uh, rapid urbanization and population growth in the continent. So the, the, we, we first started the side event in the TICAT 6 in Nairobi, uh, which was participated by African countries. And uh, there we received uh, um, requests from uh, participating countries and cities to um, organize more um, uh, such kind of op opportunities and occasions for mutual learning. Next slide, please. So in order to address the, those requests, um, uh, uh, the JICA in 2017 in, in, in partnership with UN Habitat, UNEP and the Ministry of Environment in Bahama City at the time, um, uh, they uh, uh, organized a preparatory meeting to, for establishing ACCP in 2017 in Maputo. And this meeting was uh, participated by uh, around 150, 150 participants from 24 African countries. Next slide, please. And a number of the uh, participation for the ACCP has been growing uh, since then. And in 2018, we organized the first general meeting in Rabat and which was participated by 220 participants from 32 African countries. Next slide, please. And then in 2019, there was a, a TCAT 7, and then, and then in, a, in conjunction with this, the TCAT 7, the second general meeting of ACCP in Yokohama was organized. And then at that time, uh, 450 people from 38 African countries uh, were participating in this occasion. And then the, we adopted this uh, Yokohama Action Guidance. Next slide, please. So this Yokohama Action Guidance was a quite a milestone uh, document adopted by the members of African Crisis Platform. And then this really lays out that the 11 priority action areas um, 
as shown below, the first one starting from the expanding the ACCP participation, strengthening ACCP secretary function, meaning um, moving the secretariat function from JICA in Tokyo to, to uh, UN Ahadna's headquarter, Urban Basic Services, where I am um, sitting. And then the, 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 therefore that uh, um, the functionality of the ACCP and the presence in Africa has been improved. And then the uh, third, third priority action area is ICCP assembly organization, uh, capacity building and cooperation and knowledge, continuous collection and of a basic data, monitoring progress towards achieving the SDGs, uh, improving waste collection and transportation system, enhancing safety at landfill sites, promoting 3R and then proper waste treatment, and encourage awareness raising activities, uh, creating impacts on the ground. So along with those priority action areas and the secretariat has been um, uh, carrying, has been carrying out a number of activities to support the members of ACCP. Next slide, please. So first of all, the, in the first action areas uh, for expanding the ACCP participation, so membership has been more than doubled since 2022 uh, as of now. Sorry that the, the, this number is uh, wrong, but now currently the amount, uh, the, the number of membership under the ACCP has been grown to 160 cities from 43 countries. Next slide, please. And then the strength under the uh, action area two, strengthening ACCP secretary function, uh, we have set up this uh, 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 governance system um, through the management and operation guideline. So ACCP assembly and the steering committee are the determining body for the activities to be implemented by the ACCP secretariat. And then under the ACCP, uh, under ACCP secretary is hosted by UN Habitat. And then also we uh, established a new modality of the membership called ACCP Associates Members, which is basically bilateral and multilateral donors, regional institutions in Africa, international institutions, governments, non-governmental organizations, and other actors who work on the waste management. So the uh, at the moment, uh, we have a uh, European Investment Bank, uh, Islamic Development Bank, JBIC and Alliance to Plastic Waste, as well as NOPAN, Norwegian Infrastructure Investment Facility, ha uh, have become the members of uh, ACCP Associates. And then we would like to um, utilize this modality and partnership uh, for the further uh, development of the projects after the SDG 1161 baselining survey that I'm going to touch upon later. And then uh, in, with, uh, with those, um, uh, with those uh, system and in governance structure, we would like to support ACCP members to achieve SDG in related to waste management. Next slide, please. And then also the, uh, under this, the ACCP secretary function, we have uh, developed a new website with a strengthened um, uh, knowledge hub functionality. We have been, we con this is a, <coughs> sorry, the, the, the work is still ongoing and then um, lots of improvement is still needed. And then we continue to uh, work on uh, improvement of African crisis platform website. Next slide, please. And then under the uh, third uh, action areas uh, this year, we organized the online uh, official online African Clean Cities Platform Assembly uh, as a part of official TICAT 8 side events. Unfortunately, we couldn't really uh, organize this uh, in person uh, last year uh, due to the COVID restriction. However, it was, it was uh, participated more than 560 people from all, of, all around the world, and then the th from 38 countries from uh, African countries. Next slide, please. And in terms of the capacity building, co-creation, and knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, we have been, 
uh, we have been also working together with the JICA Training uh, Center for ACCP members and a training program development at Tunis International Center of for Environment Technology, Tunisia. This is also something that we would like to um, we envisage to really um, uh, support. Uh, ACC website is up updated and the knowledge have function strengthened through the linking with the West Wessex Academy. Newsletters has been already, always um, uh, uh, sent to the members. Africa, we also uh, organized the Africa Waste webinar series, uh, number five, number one to number five, uh, uh, focusing on different thematic areas. And then those are the recordings are available at this uh, website called NOAA Campus. And then also training on municipal solid waste management in collaboration of GIZ, GIZ Kumsa, conducted in Kenya and in Burkina Faso. Next slide, please. And then this is also something that is a quite important milestone for us as well, the, the, under the basic data collection and waste SDG monitoring. So under uh, the African Clean Cities platform uh, uh, has been supported uh, this uh, uh, development of uh, waste wise cities too, which is a monitoring methodology of SDG indicator 11.6.1. So SDG indicator 11.6.1 is measuring the proportion of municipal solid waste collected and managed in control facilities out of total municipal solid waste generated by city. And UN Habitat is a custodian agency for this indicator and mandated to develop monitoring methodology and then monitor the progress towards this indicator. So uh, this uh, monitoring methodology is providing a guidance to how to assess municipal solid waste generated, collected and treated in control facilities. And then also helps cities to identify uh, the municipal solid waste recovery chain and its actors while engaging them in an inclusive and participatory way. It also helps cities to check the environmental control level of all the waste management facilities, including both uh, um, the disposal and the recovery facilities establish better waste and then resource management strategies that create business and livelihood opportunities, provide data for large man waste management infrastructure investment cases to municipal corporations, waste stakeholders and investors. And then um, based on those informations that can be provided by this SDG indicated 11.6.1 monitoring, we would like to support cities to develop bankable projects and found mobilization. So it's been really known for among, especially for the people engaged in solid waste management, especially in uh, supporting a lot of middle income countries, that the data availability of the waste management has been a big issue. And then of course, JICA's uh, projects already always have been supporting the, those cities and countries for uh, finding the, the current situation with the data collection however there was no any uh, global standardized methodology on this so the, the SDG really uh, provided an opportunity to for the standardization of monitoring methodologies along with this SDG indicator so this now this methodology being applied to different countries especially in Africa where the, that data is um, considerably lacking uh, is really giving us an opportunity for mutual learning uh, between different cities under the ACCP secret is under the ACCP plot in the ACCP uh, and also the the uh, it, it also um, provides an opportunity to compare uh, the different data across the different countries next slide please so this is uh, an example from Nairobi in turn uh, for the example of Nairobi uh, uh, in applying the waste by cities too. We did this a pilot survey in 2019. So this data is from 2019. And then this really reveals that how comprehensive a waste of law in those cities. And then you can really see that about uh, 3000 tons per day of municipal solid waste generated in Nairobi, of which uh, 463 tons received by recovery facilities 
and then the 1,551 tons per day and received by disposal facilities. And the recovery facilities are more or less reaching the uh, level of uh, uh, control, uh, basic level of control. So the amounts that are received by the recovery facilities uh, minus rejects <coughs> are considered to be the uh, uh, managed uh, amount, the managed amount uh, that is managed in control facilities. However, the disposal facility in, in, in Nairobi, it's called the Dandora dump site, is still an open dumping site. So couldn't be considered as a controlled landfill site. So therefore the amount received at disposal facilities is um, uh, zero tons per day control. And in order to know that the 65% is collected and then the 15% managed in control facilities. Therefore, the Nairobi, the SDG 11.6.1 is 15%. That really gives you the area of uh, priority intervention here. For example, uh, in Nairobi at the moment that the, um, 1,000 tons per day is uncollected and, and then polluting the environment uh, quite directly, and uh, many of them are actually hanging around in, a, especially in informal way, informal settlements where the waste collection services cannot be provided, um, financial sustainable way. So those uh, challenges can be really uh, uh, identified in this waste flow, and all this data uh, was uh, used to estimate the plasticity plastic leakage from municipal solid waste. Uh, which is amounting about four kg per person per year. So based on these data, next slide please, and then information. Next slide please. Um, the, we organized this uh, uh, Nairobi local stakeholders workshop. We're inviting the waste collection companies, waste recycling companies, uh, uh, CBOs who are engaged in slum uh, waste collection in slum areas and waste speaker groups and so on to really discuss policy and infrastructure gaps that is needed to achieve SDG 11.61 from 15% to 100%. And next slide, please. And then as a result, we developed this uh, our Future Waste of Law Nairobi, laying out the key policy interventions such as uh, 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 the source separation, as well as the uh, investments in infrastructure, uh, such as so sorting facilities, MRFs, uh, uh, so that the private recycling companies can get the better access to the recyclables. And uh, this uh, future waste flow is incorporated into Nairobi City County Sustainable Waste Management Action Plan 2020 to 2022. And uh, based on this, uh, we, you and Habitat also has been working together with the Nairobi County government for further project development. Next slide, please. And in this model and in the stream of uh, data collection to the strategic planning and then identification of future waste law uh, is being um, scaled up and to, at the moment, 17 cities, and we are now planning to apply it in another four cities. It will be 21 cities, uh, as, as you can see here. And the data is available from this link, you can go Go there, and then you really can see those. Uh, you can download this uh, fact sheet, uh, uh, three pages of uh, key waste management indicators and um, parameters are laid out. So these are also one of the achievements uh, so far uh, in under the ACCP. Next slide, please. And then, of course, we have been uh, not only in Africa. We have been collecting and. Uh, applying and scaling up this uh, scaling up this uh, into different cities all around the world and then this uh, newly collected the primary data on the very detailed municipal solid waste management according to the SDG 11.6.1 was uh, uh, used for a global modeling for estimating the uh, global estimate of SDG indicator 11.6.1. And then as you can see, the, um, this is the, the result of the, the modeling. And then as you can see, the municipalities in Sub-Saharan Africa and Oceania struggle to uh, uh, 
achieve the waste recycling rates less than about 60%. However, this is really showing a little bit higher than the World Bank estimate. And this is a very interesting uh, um, uh, findings. And in the Asia, Latin American and Caribbean region, cities are managing to collect the money for solid waste and transport it to transfer stations, recovery facilities or disposal facilities, which is amounting about like 70 to 85%, but reaching a basic level of environmental control of those facilities is still difficult. And then this is the, the also Central and the Southern Asia, the gap collection rate and control management is bigger than the other regions, implying that the many cities are still mainly relying on open dump sites. And then the challenges faced by those cities are lack of financial technical resources to properly maintain and operate that facilities. And based on this, we have uh, estimated at the moment that uh, about 2.4 billion tons of the way municipal solid waste generated in 2018, slightly higher than the, a little bit higher than the estimate from World Bank. And we really found out that the waste generation rate is higher than the expect, um, the higher than the, uh, uh, the modeling of the World Bank. And then the, we also found that which, and then out of uh, uh, 2.4 billion tons of municipal solid waste generated globally, 45%, uh, as you can see here in the in the world chart, 45% uh, is mismanaged, which is amounting about 1 billion tons per year. So you really can see the magnitude of the challenges that the world facing in terms of solid waste management. And in that main major uh, one, especially the, the lack of, um, support and in finance uh, in sub-Saharan Africa uh, is really shown in, in this chart as well. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry that I, so, the, so under this improving waste collection and transportation system, based on this SDG uh, level 61 monitoring, we have been uh, supporting different cities for the, uh, projects um, to improve the waste collection and a transportation system. Yes. Next slide, please. So in terms of enhancing safety at the landfill sites, a UN Habitat has been supporting the, the uh, waste pickers in by providing the hand washing stations as a COVID-19 risk mitigation. And the JICA is now uh, preparing a project to uh, upgrade the landfill site in, in Kiambu in Kenya. And then also MOEJ, Ministry of Environment in Japan, has been supporting the landfill site the rehabilitation in Flanet. Next slide, please. And then, of course, the knowledge and good practices. So, so sorry, I, I ran out of my time, but the, this is the wrap up of uh, SDG 11, six, um, sorry, the, the ACCP activities. Thank you very much. Am I, oh, sorry, I, I'm not really understanding that. It, do I still have some time, Shimadara san, or I don't? Okay, so let's, uh, okay, the, 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 please next, go to next slide, next slide. Yes, and then this is the, uh, oh. yes, um, so this is, uh, we also have been doing uh, uh, webinars and online uh, capacity development and so on. So the Africa Waste Webinar Series has been organized and an online knowledge sharing initiative in collaboration with Waste Cities uh, was uh, done, uh, uh, especially uh, Waste Wise Learning Hub and Waste Technology Deep Dive Webinar Series as well. Next, next slide, please. Encourage awareness raising activities. So we have been developing the a project for improved solid waste management in transportation system based on SDG 11.6.17 results. And then under this, Addis Ababa is now doing the awareness raising project supported by Alaska and Plastic Waste. 
and we have been also working together with this um, organization called Let's Do It World uh, for the promotion of Water Cleanup Day and the 17th September in the World Up, uh, 17th September and then also the World Up Forum. We uh, promoted this day and then uh, the, uh, also supporting this organization for, for, the, for this um, campaign of this day. Next slide, please. So this is uh, create the final priority action areas under the Yokohama Action Guidance is creating impacts on the ground and the project development mechanism improving, uh, involving the waste by cities too. And then ACCP associate members are now in research. And then from the, uh, this year to next year, we would like to really accelerate this area uh, for, for the co-development, the projects and the impacts on the ground. Next slide, please. And then last year, we uh, also adopted a new uh, document called the Tunis Action Guidance, which is kind of lay out additional areas for the activities that can be carried out under the ACCP, which is more, the, more, more focusing on the global uh, trends in the methane, global methane pledge, as well as the plastic treaty now, now being discussed uh, among the member states. Uh, so we would like to really continue to do the based project and identification project development based on SDG indicator 11.6.0 monitoring and a role as a coordination body of waste management projects and donor relations in Africa is also envisaged uh, under this ACCP. So this is a graph you can really see the, uh, the growth of ACCP. Uh, the country members and the city members are, have been in constantly increasing. And then also, as you can see from like 2019 to 2022, uh, the number of the cities who has um, completed the SDG level 6 survey has been increasing. However, we would like to think of how to really rapidly scale up these activities uh, through mutual learning is something that we would like to explore. And then a, a project development, uh, the city that has project, developed some projects also has been increasing. So we would like to um, continue working um, uh, on this and then UN Habitat would like to, uh, is, is committed to support African Clean African Crisis Platform and our African cities and countries in addressing solid waste management. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry for not keeping my time. <laughs> Ms. Dr. Takeus, thank you very much. Uh, not only ACCP, but uh, there are a lot of activities that has been rolled out in Africa. So data management, the importance uh, is something that JICA is always aware of, and we are also working with our partners as well. So on the foundation of that, and on the ground impact, you talked about uh, specific activities are being led, and then the local stakeholders are in and that I think is a wonderful activity of its own. And also the, the methane pledge and also the uh, contribution to the global climate uh, change also was evident. So at the same time, uh, in terms of the pledge that you mentioned, it was wonderful. And uh, in terms of the last uh, presentation, I would like to invite the last speaker for the session. Good day, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, thank you very much for providing us the opportunity to share our experiences here in Maputo, Mozambique. And uh, I apologize if you hear some background noise. I'm sitting in a somehow rural area before rushing to the to the office. You know, we are starting. We are so far starting the day. You can move the slides, please. Next slide. This is uh, the layout of uh, my presentation. I'll spend a bit more time on chapters three and four so we can move ahead. The first chapter aims at uh, just familiarizing those who are following us. Next slide, please. Those who are following us about the situation, the current situation in Maputo. Maputo is the capital city of Mozambique. We are in the extreme south of the country. So other African neighbor countries are Iswatini and Swaziland. We have a population of around 1.2 million, but uh, one important thing is that during uh, daylight on working days, 
uh, it raises up to more than 2 million because there are people coming from other neighbor uh, cities and town and uh, increasing the, the load and of uh, services and other pressure over the city. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of uh, context, urban, urban pattern, we have a spread land occupancy, uh, mostly informal. We have people starting to build new houses, even in unplanned unplan places in the country, which makes the local economy also predominantly informal. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, an image that describes clearly the situation. You can go uh, quickly over the, the next two slides. It's just to give you the idea on the contracts between the main city and the surroundings. You can see that you have high rise buildings at the back near the sea. And when you come to the periphery, you will find people spreading around unplanned areas. You can move, please. Next slide. Uh, in a context like this, in terms of urbanization, look at the contracts. This is the main city. And then at the back, as I, I show you in the previous slide, it is where most of the population lives. Next slide, please. Next. Again, another view uh, of the informality. So 70% of our city is like that. Uh, we have uh, a, a five-year municipal development plan guiding our annual planning. And I would like to highlight strategic goal number 48, which uh, defines uh, a target of increasing the coverage of uh, solid waste management service to the city. Next. And uh, at the same time, paying attention to environmental challenges coming from solid waste management uh, uh, works. In terms of our organization model, we mostly outsourced our services. Every year, renewing contracts with 46 small and micro companies. Uh, actually, during this 2023, it's going to raise up to 48 because we're including two new neighborhoods in which we are going to uh, render these services. We have four big companies also contracted by the municipality, ensuring the secondary collection. So in the big containers around the city, there are four companies with big trucks ensuring transport to final disposal. And we have uh, a parallel mechanism serving those large producers like restaurants, hotels, condominiums. So they are not served by these four companies. They have to contract their own private service. Next, please. Uh, as we are struggling to close the Hulen Dam site, I guess you heard when now was talking about UN Habitat work in Hulen Dam site. It is uh, not well managed. You can move please quickly. Uh, I was expecting to be managing myself the slides. So you can go uh, quickly with this slide. I just want to mention that uh, in the dam site, we had a special contractor working on ensuring clearance of uh, uh, dampened materials, spreading and compacting them. Uh, please move the slide ahead. You can click, please. And we, as city department, ensuring the overall supervision of this uh, organizational model. Next slide, please. This includes a daily certification of uh, uh, payment slips that are paid centrally by one of our departments. Uh, the image you see here, it's a sad moment in which we had an accident in the damp site uh, back in 2018 and uh, served as a lesson for us to improve the security of our operations. Uh, financially, um, the Maputo model is served by what we call a cleaning tax which is charged, charged to all domestic and non-domestic entities connected to the city electricity grid. We also uh, charge by licensing all uh, um, private service providers in the field of solid waste management, particularly those practicing door-to-door -door collection to large um, waste producers. Next, please. 
So in average, we produce around 1,500 1, tons of waste per day. And as I mentioned, they are dumped in a single site located near the Mapuche International Airport, known as Huleni Dam Site. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, following a, a, a disaster occurred in February 2018 uh, that killed uh, more than uh, uh, 20 persons, we were summoned to close the dam site and create a safer disposal site. This is one of the challenges we are facing uh, currently. Next, please. So these first uh, slides were just for you to familiarize on what we are doing to trying to improve the situation. I ask Secretariat to go through very quickly, uh, passing fast the next six slides, please. So these are the images of the efforts we are making to improve the stability of slopes in the land side. Move please, next slide. We, you can see here the machinery working hard on the stabilization of slopes using the, the Fukuoka method, next. Secretariat, please move fast these slides. These are just pictures to illustrate what I'm talking about regarding the efforts we are making to increase safety and security in the Huleni Dam site. Move fast, please. This is the, the basin of Lichet where we, we make a provisional improvement of the quality before discharging it to the sea. Now going to chapter number two, this is important. I'm also going to go fast. This is the structure of our project. You can see the definition of outputs and what we are receiving as inputs from, uh, from JICA, both technically and financially. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk about objectives and the outputs only. So the project is titled Capacity Development for Sustainable and Integrated Solid Waste Management in Maputo. It started in November 2019 and it's expected to end October this year. The implementing partners are the Maputo City Council plus JICA and the beneficiaries are of course the citizen of Maputo, but particularly the municipal staff in terms of capacity development. It happens in the city of Maputo where I'm based now. Next, please. In terms of overall objectives, we aim at establishing a sustainable and integrated solid waste management service in the city and ensure documentation of this experience. We have identified the key performance indications like we want to raise the ratio of solid waste collection from the, the current uh, percentage when we started to a new defined percentage. Unfortunately, I could not bring here the exact figures. Uh, key performance indication number two, uh, we want to increase also the volume of recycled solid waste management, so reduce the pressure in the final destination. And finally, we want to produce a, and share this solid waste management model nationwide and globally. Next, please. As specific goal, we aim to enhancing the capacity of implementing a sustainable and integrated solid waste management service in Maputo based on the master plan of solid waste management development with assistance from uh, several partners. He is contributing to the production of the so-called Maputo model. So a documentary, a report that can be shared worldwide. We have a number of key performance indicators. The first two, uh, we are monitoring the progress in, uh, implementation and we, we want to ensure that it will evolve until around 67% at the end of the project so that we can sustain the gains in the next phase. Uh, we want to enlarge the geographic coverage of solid waste management. We also want to increase the volume of recycled materials Currently, when we started the project, it was zero, and now it's growing slowly. We want to reach 100 kgs per month of recyclable materials. The ranking of organizational service capacity increases, including also 
the individual's performance also increased in terms of uh, universal um, standards. Next, please. SKPI number six, uh, we aim to engage the community and ensure that they participate in this. We know that uh, there is a number of informal actions in solid waste management, which play an important role. So we want to also uh, take stock for their involvement and raise it to 9% at the end of the project. And finally, we expect to uh, put all this uh, effort under our um, um, legal framework on solid waste management so that we can have tools to enforce people to obey the new rules we are going to introduce following this project. Next, please. And we have uh, uh, seven main outputs, uh, which are namely enhanced institutional capacity and monitoring based on master plan, enhanced capacity of supervision of solid waste management outsourced services, particularly the collection and transportation to the final destination, enhanced capacity to minimize the quantity of waste disposed through maximization of the uh, 5R, Next, please. So including mainstreaming of segregation models in the way we are disposing our waste. Output number four, it's capacity development, equipping our staff with knowledge, tools, and skills for adequate management of sanitary landfills, which are the near future in our service. Output number five, we want to enhance capacity of our institutional management systems particularly human resource and financial sustainability. And number six will be the community environment uh, on environment awareness, as I mentioned, with focus on participation. And finally, documentation of the lessons learned. Next, please. We are going to call this uh, documentary as the Maputo model. So these are our internal managerial structure. You can see I am at the top of a huge team of uh, experts and administrators. We have two municipal directors and they have a number of heads of departments and sections supporting them. We can pass quickly this slide, please. Next. Um, this is the, the way we address uh, output number one through in introducing reforms in our department organization, enhancing our capacity for management of outsourced services, reestablishment, what we call proof of service section. So this is the unit that works directly with the private uh, service providers that serve large uh, solid waste producers. Next. And uh, here we have again, the need to create a planning and monitoring section, enhance the capacity of environmental awareness section, optimize the department of fleet management and workshops out of, so management of our facilities. I would also like to ask the secretariat to take only two seconds in one slide here in chapter three, otherwise we will not meet our time frame. So please, spend only two seconds in each slide until we reach the end of chapter three. Next, please. So this is uh, basically the structure we have. In one side, the solid waste collection and transportation, and on the other side, the reduction of uh, volumes and final disposal. Next. Here also you can have an idea on the way we monitor our activities. So all uh, small activities are in this diagram until we find the final uh, certification of quality of services. This is what we are going to use to rank the, the increase of the quality of our standards. Next. Uh, this is just an illustration. You can go quickly. This is the way we are using a way bridge to daily collect data on the quantity of solid waste that is disposed in our dump site in Huleni. This is the same uh, data now characterized by areas. We have seven municipal districts and we have different types of solid waste, commercial, domestic, industrial. So we are ranking them here 
based on their characteristics. Um, this is an important thing in our work, training on sanitary landfill management. JICA has been developing a lot of technical efforts aiming at producing a guideline on sanitary landfill management, which is the near future in terms of solid waste management in Maputo. So again, go please quickly, I'm sure all participants received this presentation in advance. I'm just showing you the contents, the main contents of this guideline. I'm not going to spend time on this. Um, above all, it's very technical. So please go quickly to chapter number four. So you can see that all aspects of uh, landfill construction, um, environmental care, training of people so that we can be ready to to, so now you can go a bit slowly in this chapter, which is one of the most important things we are doing now. I remember now was saying that the challenges in sub-Saharan uh, Africa in terms of quality of service are from one side, our capacity, human and institutional, but the main challenge is financial. So we are currently trying to develop a new system of uh, uh, tax collection, aiming at increasing the uh, sustainability of our finance. The first step is enforcement of segregation uh, in the point of disposal of solid, solid waste. This will create an environment to boost the circular economy and the city and bring us new indirect source of financial for our services on solid waste. Next, please. We have been checking the structure of our tax collection, and we found out that uh, maybe there is not enough equity and justice in the current system used in Maputo. So with help from JICA experts, we are developing a new system, which you can move please, without aggravating the cleaning taxes can bring more money to the municipal authorities for this solid waste management. The question is, how can you ensure equity and justice while at the same time taking money from the pockets of your citizen. I will show you how. We have been checking our system since the introduction of the cleaning tax in 20, 2008, which is, I mentioned before, charged through the electricity bill. So every month when you pay your electric bill, you are charged uh, a percentage from uh, the, this amount, which is what we call the the cleaning tax. So this diagram shows you that we have three levels of payers, low, medium, and high, which means if I buy 100 kilowatt hour per month and my neighbor is buying 200 kilowatt, kilowatt uh, hours, we will be paying the same thing. So this is why I'm saying, apparently it's not just, we need to refine a bit more this methodology. Next. Uh, so this is just shows how unsustainable the current model is. And the predictions show us that if we maintain it by the year 2040, we will need to be subsidized by around 70%, which is the, re the red line you see on the top of this diagram. Next, please. So the alert is there. We need to act immediately to make sure that uh, we will not reach that risky place of 70% uh, subsidies in the next five to 10 years. Next, please. What we did was to check uh, the relation between the electric bill and the volume of uh, solid waste management generation in the city. And we found out a linear correlation between what people are using at home or in their businesses as electric, electric consumption and the real quantity of waste that they generate. Next, please. This is just an illustration of uh, the calculations that were made. We went to the, we checked our operational costs per year. We checked the total solid waste production in each year and we went to the database of the electricity utility to see what was charged to the citizens of Maputo. So these three variables allowed us to produce what we call a unit um, 
financial or I would say what everyone have to pay based on what really produce. For the domestic uh, consumers, we reached 0 0.6 metric uh, per kilowatt hour. And for those who are non-domestic, 1.2 metric for kilowatt hour. So metric is our currency in Mozambique. Next, please. So based on, on this, I repeat, we found that it's unfair to put people in three categories of consumers. Now we want to charge them uh, door by door or household by household. And uh, this is what we are preparing to submit for our authorities to approve. Next, please. And we hope that with this model, we are also checking options. We have option one, number one, which is to move from what we are now directly to 100% covering of this 0.6 metric eyes for domestic and 1.2 for non-domestic. Next, please. So this would be going suddenly to the model or going slowly, just charging 50% in the first year and growing until we reach 100% of this new taxation. So this is just illustration of the results of uh, the modeling. Next. We hope that uh, by the end of this year, we will have been introducing this. We know that there is a challenge. We need to prepare people for the change. Otherwise, there will be disruptions. And we know that uh, a sound um, communication strategy is very important. Using kids at school, communicated in local language, and also synergies um, between internal sectors like economic activities, who are those who deal with the large waste producers. Uh, our financial department are managing payments and their tax collections, and of course, our internal structure. But I would like to highlight here the role of the city power utility, EDM. EDM stands from Electricidad de Mozambique. So this is a very important uh, entity within this sustainability. Next, please. So moving quickly to the end of our presentation, I would like to share with you what we have planned as a way forward. We have a structure through which every year we hold two joint coordination committee meetings. The most recent one was held on the 7th of December last year to assess the progress of the project and decide on the way forward. So what I'm going to show you in the next slide uh, the decision of this joint coordination committee. So uh, regarding output number one, we aim at preparing a midterm review report on the progress of the solid waste management master plan implementation, particularly now that we are going to the end of this project. Regarding output number two, we, uh, we are going to prepare an improvement plan for waste collection and transportation services, including the recommendations that were generated um, in the management and monitoring of outsourced services in the city. Next, please. For output number three and six, we will continue promoting the five R's, the activities of sensitization and public awareness and environmental education activities, particularly in primary and secondary schools. We are going to continue encouraging and promote recycling, including the composting of organic waste, because we have lots of waste coming from markets with uh, uh, very huge quantities of organic waste. Um, we aim also at establishing a link between uh, uh, Maputo City and Mauricio de Souza from Brazil, who has been um, doing uh, in, in very interesting uh, partnership activities and training of people, particularly kids, through what they call Turma da Monica. So we want to try this, taking the advantage of uh, being a Portuguese speaking language country. Next, please. On output number four, we want to make adequate use of the guideline on sanitary landfill management that has been produced by JICA expert during the last years. Um, as a preparation for the planning construction of on operation of a new sanitary landfill in Katembe. So Katembe is an area of Maputo over the Maputo Bay 
on the stream side of the city. On output number five, we are going to finalize the strategy aiming at increasing our capacity of uh, income generation to the improvement of uh, the taxation system as I detailed in the last chapter. Also analyze internal aspects to enhance our organization capacity to tax the citizens. Next, please. Finally, on output number seven, we'll be focusing on compiling experience, gathered lessons learned, and produce a documentary and a brochure disseminating what we call the Maputo model. There is an important role in this project that is being paid by our central government through the Minister of uh, Land and the Environment. So they will continue paying their important role in this activity. Next, please. The next is just thank you, and particularly thank you for the organizers by providing us with this rich opportunity to come from Africa to Japan through this virtual system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Magaya. Starting with human resource development, and they have me to long term perspective on financial systems so that you can create sustainable uh, solid waste management based on Maputo model. And also, data management has been done effectively. This is a very leading case study, which is quite useful. Now, we would like to move to QA question and answer sessions. We have already received Three questions, Jaika, you inhabit the Maputo, respectively. So I'd like to go in this order. A first question from Sudan to Bangladesh, from Dominica to Peru. Uh, those cases are quite interesting. It is important to analyze Jaika project. So I'd like to ask how you are going to go about the project analysis of Jaika. So I'd like to answer that. We talked about broad-based African survey and analysis. Besides providing individual support to countries, we have project research scheme. And this is how to learn past project, analyzing what are the resources each country has. I can't give you a specific study, but if you look at the website, you would see some of the outcomes and also our experiences are utilized for cooperation based on platforms. So the second question is to Ms. Takeuchi. UN Habitat is a UN organization working with other organizations like JICA. What do you expect from these partner organizations? What are some of the input that you expect from the partner organization? Thank you very much for the questions. Of course, that the we are we cherish is in a way we we the partnership with the different organization is very very important for us. And then the we would like to um the channel our partnership to really like first of all create impacts to really achieve the one of those those uh, waste SDGs. And then all the, also the other agendas uh, related to um, municipal solid waste management improvements. So any, I think also that the different partners and different organizations has got different strength. So we would like to really, uh, rather than overlapping our efforts, we would like to complement each other in terms of, of our strength and then uh, so that we can really maximize the 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 impacts on the ground, especially uh, for the beneficiaries and then the people really suffering from the mismanagement of waste all over our world. So those are the the key probably insights and, and thoughts from me in terms of partnership between you and Habitat and uh, other organizations. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Compliment and maximize in order to maximize the deliverables by leveraging 
on and the partnership is very important. And in terms of 21 countries, you have been able to expand the membership and JICA operation countries are also included, Kenya, and there may be some overlap and they're welcoming this overlap. And it's an input on both parts that are enjoying, I think, the, these two areas. So thank you, Sam, thank you very much. So I would like to also invite uh, a question to uh, Mr. Sylvia Magina. And uh, you have introduced some of the project uh, for JICA in waste management in community and citizen, the stakeholders awareness and the collaboration with the city. Is there any changes that you have observed over the years? Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, we, we have been observing changes so far, uh, not uh, at the level we expect, but there are some behavioral changes that we have been noticing recently. People uh, tending to avoid throwing garbage in the roads, particularly when they are driving, you would see them from the window cars throwing. Uh, there is one special thing I would like to mention. Actually, yesterday I learned that Maputo and Mozambique uh, as a whole was the third country in the world reaching high volumes of waste collection during the most recent uh, World uh, Cleaning Day. So you know that there's, there is this global movement in which large cities are inviting all citizens to participate and we reached record numbers in terms of uh, volumes of solid waste. I was so sad because this doesn't mean that we are good. The fact that we are the third in terms of volume means that our citizens are still producing lots of waste, which could be more uh, smartly managed, managed and disposed. But as I mentioned, the results are encouraging and we hope that in the near future during the next three or four years, we can reach, which is our ambitions goal of being a zero waste uh, city generating. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stu. That waste volume is going to increase, but you have introduced five bar activities and community members are important stakeholders. It is true for JICA project. So we're looking forward to continued efforts in your country as well. We still have seven or eight minutes. So I'd like to ask the audience to ask additional questions if you wish from the venue as well as from Zoom application. Uh, maybe question will not be submitted out on the fly. So it's a little early than time, but in the session at JICA with Africa, uh, we have multiple partnerships that we were able to achieve within countries and US Habitat, it's ACCB, local partners are involved. Very wide realm of SDG promotion and data collection. It's really leveraging upon the strong foundation of the United Nations. And also, uh, Mr. Uh, Silva, you mentioned about your initiative, a wide realm of uh, initiative, 5R, and also external factors. And uh, the first, first, second, third step, uh, there is a big step uh, advancement that you have made in Mozambique. I just have to thank both of you. But uh, Ms. Takeuchi, uh, Mr. Gaia, if you have any last word, uh, please uh, give us uh, your message to the online viewers. So can I start with Takeuchi-san, please, Ms. Takeuchi? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I would like to reiterate that the, uh, the UN Habitat has been really valuing the, the partnership uh, created through the African Clean Cities platform, both at the the, with the Japanese partners as well as the the African partners, uh, we really are we really seeing uh, lots of um, uh, growth in demand for solid waste management for the past years in in this continent. So I think that the very um, this this initiative has been very um, reflecting and uh, responding very properly 
appropriately to the the demands on the ground. So we really value this partnership so far, and and I've been uh, I, I cannot appreciate enough for this uh, opportunities. Thank you very much. So Mr. Magaya, please. Yes, Hello. thank you. Uh, I will make use of these uh, final minutes to thank particularly the government of Japan. Allow me to speak on behalf of the mayor of Maputo. Uh, we had uh, big improvements in our dump sites in Hulane. I didn't mention this during my presentation. We got uh, good news in 2021 through the Japan ambassador in Mozambique. We received a donation of uh, six heavy machinery that are improving the way we are managing uh, solid waste in our final disposal. Uh, four excavators and two bulldozers. We are trying to operate them pro properly, ensure maintenance so that they will last and we will lose this val valuable contribution from the people of Japan. Uh, with JICA, we have been learning uh, very fruitful lessons. Uh, our, I have been comparing the service providers of uh, water and electricity. And I have been asking myself, why don't we follow the same mechanism, uh, taking the municipality out from this responsibility and putting private entities going to collect garbage door by door and charge people. And people told me, uh, our experts uh, teach me that uh, the difference between water, electricity and solid waste is that electricity, people need electricity at home. People are in need of water in their households, but they are not in need of solid waste. They need to dispose it anyway. So you cannot use the same system in terms of increasing your revenues by providing this service and ensuring that you charge them. You need to find smart ways. And this introduction of segregate, segregated collected in which JICA is playing an important role it is the first step to show people that garbage is value. Garbage is part of the circular economy. All these things I've been learning during the last three years throughout this uh, important collaboration with JICA. So I'd like to highlight that we are learning a lot and thank all the external and internal entities involved in the implementation of the project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think two of you touched a very important thing. In terms of electricity, water, and waste are different. The nature is different. But in order to make improvement, the JCC, I think, is a reflect upon the philosophy and spirit of that. So uh, both of you, thank you very much. Early in the morning and time differences, we appreciate you being here with us. So we'd like to conclude the session. Thank you very much for being with us today.